so much, Brian. Are we going to have a scripture readings? Rita is going to read Job 35, 1 through 15. And after which, Joella will read Hebrews 12, 1 through 15. I'm using the King James Version. Lulu spake moreover and said, Thinkest thou this to be right, that thou said my righteousness is more than God's? For thou saidest, What advantage will it be unto thee? And what profit shall I have if I be cleansed? From my sins, I will answer thee and thy companions with thee. Look unto the heavens and see, and behold, the clouds which are higher than thou. If thou sinnest, what dost thou against him? Or if thy transgressions be multiplied, what dost thou unto him? If thou be righteous, what givest thou him? Or what receiveth he of thine hand? Thy wickedness may hurt a man as thou art, and thy righteousness may profit the Son of Man. By reason of the multitude of oppressions, they make the oppressed to cry. They cry out by reason of the arm of the, of the mighty. But none said, Where is God my maker, who giveth songs in the night, who teacheth us more than the beasts of the earth, and make it us wiser than the fowls of heaven. There cry, there they cry, but none give it answer because of the pride of evilness. Surely God will not hear vanity, neither will the Almighty regard it. Although thou sayest thou shalt not see him, yet judgment is before him, therefore trust thou in him. But now, because it is not so, he had visited in his anger. Yet he knoweth it not in great extremity. Therefore the Job opened his mouth in vain. He multiplied words with knowledge, without knowledge. Here ends our scripture for today. I'm reading Hebrews 12, 1 through 15. Do you see what this means? All these pioneers who blazed the way, all these veterans cheering us on, it means we better get on with it. Strip down, start running, and never quit. No extra spiritual fat, no parasitic sins. Keep your eyes on Jesus, who both began and finished this race we're in. Study how he did it. Because he never lost sight of where he was headed, that exhilarating finish in and with God, he could put up with anything along the way, cross, shame, whatever. And now he's there in the place of honor, right alongside God. When you find yourselves flagging in your faith, go over that story again, item by item. That long litany of hostility he plowed through. That will shoot adrenaline into your souls. In this all-out match against sin, others have suffered far worse than you. To say nothing of what Jesus went through, all that bloodshed. So don't feel sorry for yourself, or have you forgotten how good parents treat children, and that God regards you as his children? My dear child, don't shrug off this discipline. Don't be crushed by it either. It's the child he loves that he disciplines. The child he raises, he also corrects. God is educating you. That's why you must never draw back. He's treating you as your children. This trouble you're in isn't punishment, it's training. The normal experience of children. Only irresponsible parents leave children to fend for themselves. Would you prefer an irresponsible God? We respect our own parents for training and not spoiling us. So why not embrace God's training so we can truly live? While we were children, our parents did what seemed best to them. But God is doing what is best for us, training us to live God's holy best. At the time, discipline isn't much fun. It always feels like it's going against the grain. Later, of course, it pays off handsomely. 
or it's the well-trained who find themselves mature in their relationship with God. So don't sit around on your hands. No more dragging your feet. Clear the path for all distance runners so no one will trip and fall, so no one will step in a hole and sprain an ankle. Help each other out and then run for it. Work at getting along with each other and with God. Otherwise, you never get so much of a glimpse of God. Make sure no one gets left out of God's generosity. Keep a sharp eye out for weeds of bitter discontent. A thistle or two gone to seed can ruin a whole garden in no time. Thank you. All right, as we prepare our hearts to receive God's word, I realize something important in Welcome, Molly. I see Molly is on. How are you doing? Well, you have your microphone off. Uh, welcome, though. Um, the text, actually, for today is taken from verse 10 of Job 35. But none says, where is God, my maker, uh, thy maker, who giveth songs in the night. Everybody else, you can um, actually mute your microphones at this time. Okay. okay. Are we going, we're good there, Brian? Okay. All right. There was a person who wanted some comfort from God's word, so she went to the pastor and asked the pastor to give her some words of comfort. And the pastor said to her, I'd like for you to go through the neighborhood and find out somebody who never had a problem. And that person is going to be able to help you to give you words of encouragement. Of course, the story goes that she went throughout the neighborhood, spoke with all the neighbors, and she came back and said to the pastor, I am really blessed when I look at my situation when compared with others I am truly blessed. The background of the story is one of Job's comforters. Uh, we must remember that one of Job's comforters, uh, Job, the Lord said of the Job's comforters, who is this that darkens counsel with words without wisdom? Now, there are many of those going, uh, going around today. I am rather amused, by the way, when I travel from country to country, how in Kenya, in Guyana, throughout the Caribbean, people, and in the United States, people use scripture to justify their political or social beliefs rather than seeking scripture to inform them as to what they believe. So we believe first, and then we search the scripture to find out how to support our belief. In one sense, it's a reverse creation. Rather than um, God creating man in his image, we create God in, in, in our image, believing that God, uh, Believing that God is like us, he thinks like us, he believes like us. Brian, is there a way you can get this on full screen? What? Okay. All right, don't what are we trying to get on full screen? Dr. Rainfall, just have to. Yeah, me. Well, that's what we're recording, it's just you on full screen. Oh, okay. All right. Sorry. Thank you. All right. So what happens is um, people tend to create a God in their image. I remember the, what the words of the Apostle Paul. Paul said, I travail in prayer until the image of Christ be formed in you. I wonder how many of these um, activists, for want of a better word, will actually go that direction and say, I want the image of Christ to be formed in me. And that goes for anybody, any group. 
you know, um, we as Christians, we have our identity, but our identity must be that the image of Christ is formed in us. Now, um, today we're going to look briefly at Elihu, Elihu's words. Uh, what are night songs? The content of night songs and the value and uses of night songs. This sermon is not original. Uh, Spurgeon preached on it in 1898, even though who am I to question his theology? Um, I still have some ex exegetical questions about that. Uh, James Earl Massey uh, preached a sermon on this when he described the experience of slaves as they sang songs in the night. In fact, he claimed that the Negro spirituals were actually night songs, songs of suffering. He noted that the slaves used songs in the night to encourage each other, to give code messages to each other. For example, Canaan was a code word for Canada and that sort of thing. But all humans suffer and all humans sing during their suffering, either song of faith or song of the blues. As we look across the world, we look at the music of the masses and they come back and we see souls of crisis, like our text, people trying to develop songs in the night to encourage themselves and to encourage others. So let's talk briefly about what are night songs. Well, in the night when the darkness comes, if you have fear of anything, you become more fearful. For those who are sick, or who have ever been sick, you know, in the, you have a toothache, for instance, in the night, it is more painful. You have a cold or a flu, the flu, it is more difficult in the night or sicknesses. If you're frustrated, you have problems at work or problems at home. In the night, they're magnified. If you have financial difficulties, they seem greater in the night when you lie down to sleep. We have nights of sorrow. We have nights of persecution. We have nights of doubt. Nights of bewilderment. Nights of anxiety. If you're anxious about something, in the night you feel that anxiety nights of oppression and especially at this day and age nights of ignorance the darkness the ignorance that we go about uh, perpetrating and listening to and uh, having to deal with on a daily basis but we have nights of all kinds which press upon our spirits and it terrifies our souls listen i can't tell you how many nights i wake up after having a terrible dream that uh, I'm alone in the hospital dying of COVID and um, there's no one, nobody who can visit me, nobody who can reach out to me. But more terrifying than that is the nights when I dream and think of someone that I love, someone who I care about is in the hospital because of COVID and I can't visit that person. I can't reach out to that person. I can't hold that person's hand. Uh, Martin Carter, the Guyana's national poet wrote, this is a dark time, my love. It is a season of oppression, dark metal and tears. It is the festival of guns, the carnival of misery. Everywhere, the faces of men are strained and anxious and it seems like that is the society that we live in today strained and anxious but andre crouch the songwriter puts it this way he said yes we have problems like joella read about the suffering that god teaches us and the teachers for us and um, he sang how the song goes through it all through it all i learned to trust in jesus i learned to trust in god he went on to say if i've never had a problem i wouldn't know that god could solve them 
I've never known what faith in God can do. If you're never sick, you never know God as a healer. If you've never been a problem, you would never know of God as your deliverer. Um, Deacon Smith, uh, you have had your, you and Mr. Loris have had your dark times in your life, in your struggles. Uh, Robert and, and uh, Molly, you have had your dark times in life, your, the night of the soul, the dark night of the soul through the passing of loved ones. Uh, Rita and I can tell you of dozens of people we know personally who have lost loved ones in this pandemic through coronavirus. I think of young mothers with terminal illnesses, of the torment and pain that comes from families as a result of COVID. Uh, part of what Joel read about has to do with La, La Via Dolorosa. When I was in the hospital, actually, with uh, my mini stroke, for, two, for a night, I didn't know what to think about, what to meditate on. And I meditated on the, the Via Dolorosa, the road of pain and suffering of Jesus walking down that road, a crown of thorns on his head, the soldiers beating him, he, his back bleeding, he fell beneath the load of the cross as he makes that journey. Yes, at such a time when we almost feel like, uh, almost helpless, we come up with songs in our hearts and meditations in our hearts to encourage us. Job was an interesting character. The devil came to God and said, just afflict Job and he will curse you. And God said, go ahead and try him. His, his wife, his friends, they all turn against him. Yet in the midst of all the suffering, he said, though he slay me, the worms eat my body, yet in my flesh I will see God. And the person who's dearest to him, the only person who's left, his wife, came to him and said, Job, why don't you curse God and die? And Job said, woman, you speak like a foolish woman. And then comes a song that we are so familiar with, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Um, blessed be his name on the road marked by suffering. Though there's pain in the offering, blessed be the name of the Lord. And so as we go through these difficult and anxious times, let us not forget that God has been good to us, that God will see us through. His friends, Job's friends came, they used the uh, nice platitudes. He doesn't cause the just to suffer. You must be doing something wrong. But Job, as he reflected on it, he said, listen, I have said, I've been too presumptuous in what I said. Job was blaming God. Job was basically telling God, God, you're the one who is unrighteous. I live the righteous life. You're unfair to me. And then Job said, I have been too presumptuous. There's a wonderful thing about God, though. He can take it. He's man enough to take it. Any criticism of him, he doesn't feel intimidated by our criticisms. He can deal with it. What God wants from us is honesty, not stock phrases, not the churchy phrases that you, have, you feel compelled you have to give. He can take it. We can tell him just how we feel. Yes, he's okay with that. He doesn't get nervous. What do we sing about in the night? Well, the night when you're trying to sing and Floyd will tell you more of this. You can't read the music. You can't see the notes on the keyboard. You can't even read the songbook. You can't decipher the words but we sing of a deep wounded soul and a broken spirit. There's an old Coptic hymn that goes like this, and I'm not gonna try and sing it so you don't have to worry. 
<laughs> but says, you are the words and the music. You are the song that I sing. You are the melody. You are the harmony. Praises to you I will bring. You are the mighty God. You are the Lord of Lords. You are the King of all kings. Now I return to you the song that you give to me. You are the song that I sing. Five years ago, I had probably the most difficult time in my life. I mentioned when I had a, a mini stroke that same year, I had malaria. I had some long, fearsome nights. And I cried to the Lord to just, me, just let me live and not die. Let me see your goodness as the morning. There's a song I used to sing when I was at school. It says, what a wondrous time in spring when all the trees are budding. The flowers begin to, the birds begin to sing. The flowers start their blooming. That's how it is with God's love. After the long night of winter, there comes the blooming and the freshness of life in spring. The psalmist David said a prayer that I've prayed and many of us have prayed so often. Hear my cry, O Lord, and attend unto my prayer. For, and attend unto my prayer. From the ends of the earth I will cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. We all have felt overwhelmed at some point of time. Uh, night songs sometimes are forced upon us. Uh, Bob Marley, for those who are familiar with Bob Marley, made popular the, song, the psalm that says, by the rivers of Babylon, where we sat down, there we wept when we remembered Zion. They took us into captivity and required of us a song. How can we sing the Lord's song? In a strange land and yes we sing about heaven swing low sweet chariot coming forth to carry me home or the other song a robe of white a crown of gold a harp a home a mansion fair or what has become so popular popular among evangelicals i have a song in my heart that the angels can't sing the angels cannot sing the song of redemption but we can because we're saved by grace, we're saved by the blood of Jesus, the angels have never experienced that kind of grace. So let me wrap up with my last point, the value and uses of night songs. Night songs causes growth uh, and, and development in our lives. Uh, God treats us as children to help us to grow in him. Uh, David said it was good for me that I had been afflicted, otherwise I would, might have gone out of the way. But let us all remember, everyone who is listening to me, mark these to your heart. It is because of the goodness of the Lord that we are not consumed. We're still in the land of the living. We're on the Zoom today. We can still worship the Lord because, not because you're smart, not because you're talented, not because you're educated, not because you're rich, not because you are all the wonderful, beautiful, or whatever it is, all the wonderful things you imagine of yourself. It is because of the goodness of the Lord. Because God loves you and me in a way that we do not deserve. His grace, God's riches that Christ paid for, that is why we're not consumed. So we must encourage ourselves. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord. We must encourage others. We must sing to them. Look at what has God has done for us and what he's done for others, he can do for you. There's a song that says, life is easy when you're up on the mountain. And talk comes easy when life is at its best, but it's down in the valley of trials and temptations that your faith is really put to the test. When, when we know whether we believe in God, 
when our faith is put to the test. As I close today, I want to remind you of night songs, the origin of night songs, the uses of night songs, but even in the midst of all the darkness and frustration that we face today and we go through today, let us find in our hearts songs of worship to sing unto the Lord and to encourage our own hearts. The little boy was trying to move a huge log and he went to his father and he said, Dad, I can't do it. I've tried everything. I just can't do it. And his dad said, son, you haven't tried everything. He said, dad, what have I not tried? And his father said, son, you haven't asked me as yet. And for all the suffering and confusion and sorrows and turmoil we go through, let me remind you, we haven't tried everything. We haven't asked him as yet. Let us bow our hearts today and ask him to help us. Lord, for your word, we thank you. For the opportunity to sing songs in the night, songs in our hearts, even in moments of despair, of confusion, of turmoil, even in the midst of all of those. We thank you that we can acknowledge that it is because of your grace and your greatness that we are not consumed, that we're still in the land of the living. And we thank you for that. We pray that this week you will hold us in the hollow of your hand and you'll keep us as the apple of your eye, that you pour blessings upon us every moment of our lives. Encourage us, oh dear Father. Send your angels to minister to us and help us by faith to walk this path until we enter your kingdom in heaven and help us to be an encouragement to one another. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you very much. Is, are there any comments, any questions or anything? Let me get everybody unmuted. Okay. Thank you. Anything, if, if not, so you can close. Anything that anybody wants to say? Not unmuted. <clears throat> I'm, it's for everybody else muted themselves. Yeah. I can't override it. Okay, well, unmute yourselves and if you have something to say. Everybody's going to have to unmute themselves because they muted themselves. Brian can't unmute them. There we go. Lloyd, is Marlon with you? So again? Oh, yes, she is. Marlon there? Yes, she is. Hi, Hello. guys. Hi, Marlon. I'm well. Sorry you can't see us. We had a late night last night, so... That's okay. You know, We're glad you're here. <laughs> Hi, Molly and Robert. We're glad you're here. Hi, each and everyone. Hi, Hi Robert. Molly. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. yes, yes. We can hear you well, Robert. Okay. I just wanted to uh, thank Dr. Remfeld and Rita for their services today. I definitely enjoyed it. I was in between showers and everything, so I'm dripping with water. But I had to come and sit down and listen to my services today from you. And I wanted to just thank you guys. I thank each and every one from your church. And I hope everyone have a safe day and be healthy and stay safe. And God bless each and every one of you. Thank, thank you, Robert. We can hear you like you're just next door. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bubba, tell Mr. Loris, is Mr. Loris there? Tell her we said hello. Okay, I will. Hello. She hear you. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, she is. Hello, Deacon. How is Lanaya doing? She's doing good. She's doing better, a whole lot better. Okay. 
Yeah. Tell everybody we say. How y'all doing? We doing well, thank you. All right, I will. God bless. All right, bye. Well, okay. See everybody on Sunday. All right, see y'all on Sunday. Thank Take you. care. God bless. God bless. Bye. 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 Bye.